Deep in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain. Deep in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. Alhamdulillah, الذي خلق فسوى وقدر فهدى. وأعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى الحمد لله الذي أضحك وأبكى وأمات وأحيا وأوجد وأبلى وأغنى وأقنى وأسعد وأشقى الحمد لله الذي شق البحار وأجر الأنهار الحمد لله الذي يكور النهار على الليل ويكور الليل على النهار الحمد لله الذي أنقذ من جهالة وهدى من ضلالة وأنار الأبصار وأحيى الضمائر والأفكار All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The glorified, the exalted The one who created everything and made it perfect All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The glorified, the exalted The one who determined a measure for everything and guided it all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorified, the exalted, the one who makes whom he wills laugh and makes whom he wills weep and cry, the one who causes death and gives life, the one who proportionate wealth made some of us wealthy for a wisdom, a divine one, and made some of us poor for a wisdom, a divine one as well. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorified, the exalted, the one who falls the night over the day and falls the day over the night, the one who split the sea, the one who makes the rivers run and flow. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorified, the exalted, the one who saved us, rescued us from jahiliyyah, from ignorance, the one who guided us from misguidance, the one who enlightened our hearts and chests, the one who revived our thoughts and consciousness. Allahumma ya man ala al-arsh istawa, ya man tasma' kalamana, wa tara makanana, wa ta'lamu sirrana wa alaniyatina. O Allah, you're the one who rose above the throne in a manner that suits your majesty. You hear everything we say. You see us and the places where we are. Nothing is hidden, O Allah, regarding us from you. You know what we reveal and what we conceal. We ask you for sincerity in all what we do, whether it is actions, sayings, whether it is in the open or in secret, O oh Allah, we know whatever we do, whatever we say, without sincerity is in vain. O oh Allah, grant us sincerity. Instill it in our hearts. Create it in our hearts, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, forgive our shortcomings and grant us tawfiq in all that we do. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm your host, Kareem Abu Zaid. This is our 12th edition of Aqeedah Matters, episode number 12. Seriously, I received a lot of emails beside the phone call from the last episode from Sister Asia, uh, Saudi Arabia, I believe she called. She said literally she is confused. What do you mean about 72 will go to hellfire? Will they go permanently 
and then they come out and go to Jannah? Or what? That's where the confusion is. And I received also a bunch of emails uh, shows that we have to explain this matter. I was really planning to uh, boot it off uh, to, till later on, till I give you the attributes and the methodology of the saved sect. And then after that, uh, we can discuss this matter uh, regarding uh, staying in hell uh, for eternity or uh, you go to, uh, a person would go to hell for a while and then he comes out. Uh, but I think the call is made to explain this. And I will, inshallah, this episode take some time before I go back to the signs of the saved sect. Brothers and sisters in Islam, pay attention to this. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has two ummas, two nations. The first ummah, is called Ummah al-Da'wah, the Ummah of Invitation. The Ummah of Invitation are those to whom the Prophet وسلم, was sent to invite to Islam. The Ummah of Invitation is a general term indicating all those to whom the Prophet was sent to. Those who believe and those who do not believe. So simply, all of mankind are the ummah of invitation. Are still the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The nation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they are called ummah to da'wah. Why? Because of the special particular characteristics which our messenger has which is he was sent to all of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O mankind, I am the messenger of Allah to you all. To you all. Another verse, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ I have not sent you, O Muhammad, but a mercy to all al-alameen, all of mankind. Oh. So all of these are evidence to show that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to all of mankind. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَّةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا We have not sent you but to all of mankind as a bearer of glad tiding and as a warner. And in the hadith in Sahih al-Imam Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Jabir ibn Abdullah رضي الله عنهما the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أُعْطِيتُ خَمْسًا لَمْ يُعْطَهُنَّ نَبِيٌّ قَبْلِي I was given five attributes, five qualities, that no messenger was given before me. There is another wording of this hadith, by the way, where the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named six of them. He named one of them out of the five in that particular wording, that every prophet and messenger was sent exclusively to his nation, but I was sent to all of mankind. Clear now that all of mankind are the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they are called ummah to da'wah. That means a Jew, a Jewish person is the ummah of Rasulullah. A Christian is the ummah of Rasulullah. A Hindu is the ummah of Rasulullah, but they are called ummah to da'wah. The Ummah of Invitation. Now, those who accepted Islam after they are being invited to it, they take on another name. Ummatul Ijabah, the Ummah of Response. So the Muslims, those who submitted to 
the call of Rasulullah and responded to the call of Islam after have being invited, they entered into Islam, those are called Ummatul Ijaba. Because they did respond to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. These individuals, which would include you and me if we're Muslims, of course, alhamdulillah, we are. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. We're Muslims. We are the Ummah of response. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our final eternal abode is paradise. But those who rejected the invitation, even so they belong to the Ummah of Rasulullah, the Ummah of invitation, they insisted on shirk, on polytheism, they will abide in hell for eternity. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Jannah unlawful for those who rejected Tawheed, rejected monotheism, rejected Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, you find out that in Sahih al-Imam Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes an oath, Hadith Abi Huraira radiyallahu an, by the one in whose hand my soul is, subhana, glorified and exalted, la yasma'u bi ahadun min ha'ula'i al-qawm, no one from those people would hear of me, and they reject me, but they will be dwellers of the hellfire, meaning the Jews and the Christians. So they have to accept the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So now, those who rejected the final mandate, the final call, which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought to mankind, they rejected la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. There are some who accepted la ilaha illallah, but they rejected Muhammadur Rasulullah. Those will be dwellers of hellfire for eternity. Oh. Uh, we're, we're talking now in general. I'm not saying that person or that person. Now, as for those who accepted La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, for sure they will go to paradise because of the hadith, al shafa'a that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take out of hell everyone who said la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and he had in his heart an atom or less than that of khayr, of goodness, another wording of iman, of faith. Uh, people who committed major sins, they are under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taht al They could go to hell or they could uh, go to Jannah, they could go to hell for a while and then to Jannah or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may pardon them and take to them to Jannah right away. So the only sin which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive in the day of resurrection, if you go to Allah with it, is the sin of shirk. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive that you set a partner, a rival, a sharik, an equal to him, but he can forgive everything else. So any Muslim who commits a major sin, Accept that particular sin, which is the major shirk, which is the major shirk, he is under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he could go to Jannah right away if Allah wills, Allah could pardon him. Or if he goes to hell, then he will be taken out of hell and placed in Jannah afterwards. Right here. Let's understand our hadith regarding the saved sect. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the Jews divided into 71 sects, the Christians divided into 72 sects, and we will di be divided into 73 sects. Now he said 72 of them will be in hell, except one, 
Now, what is meant by the term Ummah in this hadith? The Ummah of response or the Ummah of invitation? The consensus or the majority, there is still a debate regarding the specifics, but there is the majority. They say what is meant is the Ummah of response. Meaning, the Muslims who accepted La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, are those who are meant by the term my ummah in this hadith. But here is what they have, here is what they did. They practiced innovated religious practices, which does not constitute apostasy. So they ended up, the 72 sects, they ended up falling into acts which does not take them out of the fold of Islam does not cast them out of Islam. Of course, there are some sects that we know, they came up with practices that took them out of the fold of Islam. Belying the Quran, for example, saying that the Quran which we have is not the Quran, uh, the complete Quran. Uh, right away, you, 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 uh, when you say that uh, uh, the Imam is uh, divine, stuff like that, certainly, these certain beliefs cast you out of the fold of Islam. There are certain things which you do which would nullify your Islam. But if you come up with these acts, then you, you rejoin who? The Ummah of Invitation. That means you go and abide in hell for eternity. If you end up falling into these religious practices, which becomes a reason for you to, ca to be uh, basically uh, uh, declared to be a non-Muslim, uh, not a Muslim. Uh, but of course, uh, there are some um, uh, uh, manners, etiquettes, uh, rules uh, in order to uh, declare somebody to be uh, uh, not to be a Muslim. Uh, to say that person is out of the fold of Islam uh, is not something that everybody can do. And inshallah, uh, we will dedicate uh, in this uh, Aqeedah Matter series um, uh, a lot of episodes talking about the nullifiers of Islam. But uh, I'm trying to make this simple for you here so you understand. If you accepted La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and then you fall into two types of sins. Sins which take you out of the fold of Islam. Even so you're saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and you're pretending to be a Muslim. But what you're doing takes you out of the fold of Islam. Then you stay in hell for eternity. That person would stay in hell for eternity. But the one who practice religious practices which do not constitute apostasy uh, they are basically considered to be major sins that person is under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah wills he would pardon him and if Allah wills he would punish him but we believe that this person will be taken back to Jannah because of the virtue of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah it cannot be simpler than that I think you understood it now now you understand it very quickly, again, I will recap. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to all of mankind. This is called Ummah al-Da'wah, the Ummah of Invitation. Ummah of Invitation. Now those who accepted the call of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now they went from that Ummah of Invitation to that Ummah of Response. Now a person who stays amongst the Ummah of Invitation, that means he rejected the call of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for sure, we know that he would not go to Jannah at all. Actually, uh, uh, Allah would make Jannah haram for him. Uh, look at the look at the, the statement of, of uh, Nabi Allah Isa alayhi salam. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمْ Indeed, those who say that Allah is the Messiah, Isa alayhi salam, Ibn Maryam. Shuf, look. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ The Messiah himself, the Messiah said, O oh, Bani Israel, O oh, children of Israel, worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Here it is what I'm looking for. Here is the witness. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Whosoever associates someone in worship with Allah, even if it is me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make Jannah haram and lawful for that person. Oh, 
So very clear. النار, and his abode in hell. Now, very clear now that as long as you reject La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, the abode of that person is hell for eternity. Now, let's come back to the ummah of response, to those who responded. A person, after responding to the call of Islam, he ends up falling into two types of sins. Sins which would take him out of the fold of Islam again, would cast him out of Islam again. Then he would rejoin the ummah of invitation. Then his abode would be hell. Uh, somebody who says we follow only the Quran. Uh -huh. Somebody who says that there is a prophet came after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa whose name is Mirza Ahmad. Huh? Huh? Somebody who says the imams are divine. Somebody who says Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu is Allah. Oh, stuff like that. That takes you out of the fold of Islam. As simple as that. Now, the other type, the other type, pay attention here, the ummah of response, they end up practicing innovations or uh, practices which do not constitute apostasy. And, uh, you know, underline this because uh, I really need to explain the nullifiers of Islam for you. You will understand what I mean by that. That the acts which they do, they are still in the area of me, uh, the area of uh, kabair, uh, uh, major sins, uh, the area of kabair. Now we know that any sin other than uh, uh, shirk, uh, those individuals, as long as they say la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, they are under the mashia, under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah wills, he would pardon them. If Allah does not will, he would place them in hell for a, for a while and then they will be taken out. So this is how we understand this hadith. But again, I want to tell you that this is the majority opinion. There is another debate regarding that uh, particular explanation. But this is the view of the majority of the scholars of Aqeedah regarding this particular subject. So now, if I tell you that the Ummah are 73 sects, 70 of two are them, uh, of them are in hell, those who do not did not act an act which constitute apostasy. So they will go to hell for a while and then they will be taken back to Jannah. This is the view. But there is the saved sect which will never go to hell at all. Rather, it will go to Jannah straight and they actually could go to Jannah without reckoning. There is another level out there, by the way, that uh, you go to Jannah after uh, standing in the land of gathering for reckoning. You could go to Jannah without reckoning. We ask Allah to be amongst those. Uh, so hopefully we, we clarify this for you. Now I want to take a short break, but before I, 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 I go out for a break, I want to let you know that don't try to identify uh, certain groups and say this is the group, the saved sect, this group is the saved sect, this group is the saved sect. There is no such a thing. Listen, brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, the saved sect is certain characteristics that if you do have, you belong to them. If you do not have, you do not belong to them. That is why we're calling the episode and the episode before signs of the saved sect, characteristics of the saved sect, of the saved sect, of the triumphant, gr triumphant group. So there are certain signs which out there, if you have these signs, that is why don't go away, come back after the break, Inshallah, we'll carry on explaining these signs for you as we take your phone calls. If you have these signs, that means you belong to, these, to the, the saved sect. If you do not have them, I don't care who you're working with, under what banner. I don't care. What matters is, do these signs belong to you or not? If you have these signs, the closer you are to these signs, to these characteristics, the closer you are to the saved sect, the farther away you are from these signs, these characteristics, the farther away you are from the saved sect. Come back, learn these signs so you strive to be amongst the saved sect, which will not go to hell at all, will be placed in Jannah right away for eternity. And by the way, if they excel in Tawheed, they could go to Jannah without reckoning too. Don't go away. I'll see you after a short, after a short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to Aqeedah Matters. Um, inshallah, this is the segment where I take your phone calls. Hopefully, uh, our brothers will be posting these phone numbers for you so you can call us with your questions. Uh, again, I do appreciate, uh, I believe the uh, phone numbers are showing right now as we speak on the screen. I do appreciate so much your emails. You cannot imagine um, the first segment of the show today was because of the emails. Uh, that is the beautiful thing about live uh, uh, broadcasted uh, uh, lectures, uh, that you always uh, get the feedback and uh, you try to get the brothers and the sisters uh, who interact, uh, who are proactive. They are trying to really understand their aqidah um, and, and try to uh, uh, navigate to make sure that uh, they are understanding and they are not being uh, confused. Uh, so you can uh, simply uh, contribute by uh, emailing Karim, K-A-R-I-M, or Aqeedah Matters, the name of the show, at huda.tv. That's one way you can do it, and it's shown right now on the screen as well. Uh, inshallah, uh, we've been promising that, but we're going to have a Facebook page for Aqeedah Matters, inshallah. Uh, as well bi idnillahi ta'ala so you can post uh, your uh, comments your uh, your uh, remarks uh, your suggestions your recommendations uh, but another way that you do this as well is you give us a call right now and uh, ask your questions and um, uh, on the air and we'll be more than happy to to answer you uh, now i want to go back to these signs uh, i want to say something because i think a lot of you are troubled are trying to say okay it is that group, or that group, or that group, or that group. I, I hate to name uh, groups on, on my show here, and I will never do it, inshallah, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But uh, I want to say this. Uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, made a beautiful statement that I always love. You know what he said? اعرف الحق تعرف أهله. Learn what the truth is. You will learn who is the follower of the truth. فَإِنَّ الْحَقَّ لَا يُعْرَفُ بِالرِّجَالِ The truth cannot be known through people. وَلَكِنَّ الرِّجَالَ يُعْرَفُونَ بِالْحَقِّ But people are to be known according to the truth. I think that's where you, where you, where you are troubled. Uh, you want simply to look at this person, to look at that individual, and say he is the truth. You can do that. You cannot do that. You want to say this is the group, this particular group is the truth. No. You need to learn what the truth is. What is the truth? And now you look at the people and see if they belong to the truth or not. That is what I'm trying to tell you. And that is what I'm trying to convey here regarding the signs of the saved sect. There are certain signs that are out there. If they do have it, that means they belong to the saved sect. If they do not have it, that means they do not belong to the saved sect. So now your job is to learn where the truth is. What is the truth? In the first episode, or the previous episode of Signs of uh, uh, Saved Sect, part one, we mentioned that they adhere to both the Quran and the Sunnah. And we stress the importance of that. And I'm telling you, a lot of uh, these sects who went astray uh, from uh, the path of uh, the companions and their students and the generation that followed them, the three uh, praised generations, the first three praised generations, they fallen into that trap of the Sunnah. They uh, basically uh, wanted to get rid of the Sunnah. They, don't want, they do not want the Sunnah. You see... The first sign, where you stand regarding the authority of the Sunnah? Where you stand regarding the authority of the Sunnah? Does the Sunnah has an authority in the religion which you believe in or not? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I do have a phone call. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Salahuddin from Nigeria, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, cut off. Please call us again, Brother Salahuddin. Jazakallah khairan for trying. Now, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that beautiful hadith, 
في مستدرك الحاكم هي سيد I have left for you what you cling into with your molar teeth you will never go astray the book of Allah and my sunnah and don't try to separate the two they will never be separated from one another until you meet me on the day of resurrection next to my bond requesting me to give you a drink وحديث الارباط ابن ساريه رضي الله عنه في سنن الترمذي الحديث is authentic الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said عليكم بسنتي whosoever lives after me you must follow my way my sunnah وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعدي and the way of the rightly guided leaders after me I do have a phone call السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سيستر عائشة from KSA وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله how are you sister I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Uh, can you say again, Sister Aisha, please? Uh, I say, well, yeah, for example, you used to do shrik before, and you don't know that shrik is haram, yeah. and now you come to know that shrik is haram. And if you repent, God will not forgive you for that. What is haram, Sister Aisha? I'm sorry, what, what are you yeah, saying? Yeah, you used to do shrik, shrik. But are you, you are saying right now about shrik. About what? Shirk, shirk, yeah. Oh, shirk. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and if you used to do shirk before and you don't know that it's haram, now you come to know that it's haram. If you repent, God will not forgive you for that. Oh, Jazakallah khairan, Sister Aisha, Barakallah. I'm sorry, uh, I think my, my ears, it's my ears, is not you, Sister Aisha. I will answer you, Jazakallah khairan. Our sister Aisha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guard her and guide her and grant, him steadf grant her steadfastness. She's asking you fall, she, someone who fallen into acts which constitute shirk unknowingly. But now they learn that it is shirk. Something so beautiful about Islam that ignorance not knowing is a justification and I'm telling you a lot of you are rushing me into that area of um, you know labeling somebody to be a Muslim or not a Muslim it's a very sensitive area but anything that you do out of not knowing you're pardoned but immediately as soon as you know it sister Aisha right away you need to go back to the truth uh, I mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive someone who commits shirk, I mean in the day of resurrection, if he dies as a mushrik. The verses which I recited uh, in the show, look at the context. I'll go back to it. لقد كفر الذين قالوا إن الله هو المسيح ابن مريم. Indeed, those who, who say the Messiah is Allah are disbelievers. وقال المسيح يا بني إسرائيل عبد الله ربي وربكم إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواه النار وما للظالمين من أنصار. Whosoever commits shirk, his abode is hell. He will never go to Jannah. طيب, look at the next one. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَةِ Those who say that Allah is one of three are disbelievers. وَمَا مِنْ إِلَهٍ إِلَّا إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٌ And there is only one Ilah, one God. وَلَئِنْ لَمْ يَنْتَهُوا عَمَّا يَقُولُونَ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْتَهُوا عَمَّا يَقُولُونَ لَيَمَسَّنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And if they do not stop, stop, if they do not refrain from doing that, Indeed, they will taste a painful, do a painful punishment. Adab alim in the hereafter. Look, it's not over. Look. أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Why don't they repent? And I, uh, they ask forgiveness for that shirk. That's a major shirk. So if you repent in this world from major shirk, 
الحمد لله والله غفور رحيم أفلا يتوبون إلى الله ويستغفرونه والله غفور رحيم If they repent and they go back and ask for, for forgiveness, Allah indeed is forgiving, is merciful. Look. قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ يَنْتَهُوا يُغْفَرْ لَهُمْ مَا قَدْ سَلَفْ Ya Allah. Till those who disbelieved. This verse in context of the Battle of Badr, those who fought the Muslims, killed Muslims. If they stop, Allah will forgive. Uh, for any time that you come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept you again. What we meant here regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not forgiving shirk, if you die with it. If you die with it. Al-Hadith, Hadith Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, fi sunan al-Tirmidhi, al-Hadith Qudsi, qala Allah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا If you come in the day of resurrection with, 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 with earth filled with sins but with one condition لا تشرك بي أتيتك بقرابها مغفرة I will forgive you Hopefully we explain that for you sister عائشة جزاك الله خيرا So we mentioned that the first attribute the first characteristic the first signs of a person who belongs to the saved sect to the triumphant uh, uh, group, adherence, strict adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah, both, both adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah. And in a way, we covered this in the previous episode. Let's move to the next quality, the next attribute, the second one, uh, the second characteristic, the second sign. Again, I'm trying to show you where the truth is. Don't try to identify people and then identify the truth. No. Identify the truth and then measure. And then bring the people. Yani measure the people. It's like the truth is a garment. Come, let me put that garment in you. If it fits you, then you, be, then you belong to that, the safe sex. If it doesn't fit you, you're off. You're off. You're short here and there. Then you need to uh, come closer. That's what we need to do here. So don't try to identify this group or that group or that group. No, learn where the truth is, dear viewers, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and then you will know who is the follower of the truth. So the second attribute, the second quality, at times of disagreement, they refer these disagreements to Allah and his messenger. They return to Allah and his messenger whenever there is a disagreement. And this is in the Quran. يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم فإن تنازعتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله والرسول إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا O ye who believe, obey Allah, obey the messenger. Those who are in authority, as long as they command you what the messengers of Allah, what Allah and his messenger condone. What the messenger of what Allah and his messenger are pleased with. No disobedience. Listen, man arda nasa bi sakhatillah, asqat Allahu alayhi nas. If you try to please people at the expense of Allah, Allah will make people displeased with you. Don't do it. So obey Allah and his messenger and those who are in authority. If you differ over a certain issue, bring it back to Allah and his messenger. During his life, but after his death, huh, what should you do? Bring it back to his sunnah. Uh, uh, I do have a phone call. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Sumaya from Morocco. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh Kareem. Actually, I do not have any questions. I'm calling to tell you that Allah is higher than Shaykh Kareem. So she will not have the, you know, how to be in the right path and how to trust our things. Okay. And I ask Allah to make you and to make us from those who enter paradise without punishment and without questioning. Just Shaykh Kareem, I want you to say for my good 
الله يسلمك يا مصطفى مصطفى شبلان جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم جزاك الله خيرا سيستر سمية may Allah سبحانه وتعالى reward you I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to make all of you amongst those who enter Jannah without reckoning and without punishment you see sister Sumaya has been watching mashallah I, I enjoy that may Allah reward her I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you Jannah you and everybody in, in Morocco and everybody in the Muslim world you see something about the saved sect is no hell at all uh, listen if you're sitting out there and saying so what I go to hell for a while and come on brother uh, I, I, come on sister I love you for the sake of Allah I can talk to you about uh, hell here it's it's a lot of uh, trouble a lot of trouble uh, don't don't do this don't do, uh, the, the people before you they said وَقَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَا النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودًا وَقَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَا النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودًا the nation before you said did say that oh we're gonna go to the hell for just some days and then we'll be taken out don't that is not the attitude of of a believer uh, uh, you must be ambitious that you shouldn't be going to hell at all strive to be amongst the safe sect but if you excel in tawheed and i'm going to come to this one of these episodes how tawakkul ismullah al-wakil learn ismullah al-wakil uh, there are certain number of muslims who will go to jannah without reckoning without punishment those who implement tawakkul ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i will come to this i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be uh, amongst those for all of you, including me, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, and every Muslim who is watching, who is hearing us, and who is not hearing and watching us right now. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the verse here uh, tells you that when you differ upon something, you take it back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I shared with you the hadith that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith Ali ibn Abi Talib fil Bukhari, sent an expedition, appointed Amir, he commanded them uh, to go to hell, to go to fire, make make a fire, uh, boot, uh, you know, collect wood and straw, and then put fire on. And he said, walk into that fire. Uh, they differed. They said, no, we're not going to do that. Even so, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us to obey the Amir, commanded us to uh, stick to the commands of our uh, uh, those who are in authority. But this one, no. Let's go back to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ask him. They went back and asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said no you should not obey your Amir in this case. But now Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam is not amongst us as we speak. Where do we go? We go back to his sunnah. His sunnah is there, is in existence. And that is the second attribute. Brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, inshallah uh, my time is running out. Uh, but I look forward to receiving your phone calls, uh, I'm sorry your emails uh, until our next show with your questions. And uh, hopefully, inshallah, uh, we will uh, shed some more light, uh, some more light on these signs. In the light, Allah, I compiled, I think, uh, uh, ten. Uh, maybe if we if we can uh, uh, do five or six, would be good enough, inshallah. Uh, it would be impossible for me to compile all of them, but I'm going to try to give a comprehensive uh, uh, presentation of this in one of these episodes, inshallah. But our next uh, episode will be also signs of the saved sect that will be on Wednesday inshallah the same exact time 7 p.m. Mecca time uh, uh, 6 o'clock uh, p.m. Uh, that is Cairo time uh, my email uh, on the screen right now Kareem at Huda.tv uh, you can always email me your questions uh, also your suggestions also your recommendations also if there is something that is I'm missing and I should be covering and it's causing uh, some confusion in your in your mind and, and uh, uh, I will be more than happy to research it and bring it to you inshallah uh, brothers and sisters in Islam I also know that uh, a lot of the people who are watching me are more learned than me wallahi I'm not saying this for any reason uh, please uh, send me an email if I have said something that is uh, not correct uh, I will go back after I verify it and I will correct myself on the air uh, whatever I said right today is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whatever I said wrong is from myself and shaitan. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive my shortcomings. I love you all for the sake of Allah. And I leave you in the care of Allah. And I look forward to seeing you once more. Uh, our next episode of Aqeedah Matters on Wednesday. Till then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Deep in the deepest ocean. High in the highest mountain
In the forest, in the desert, you can see God's creation. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God's creation. He made us different nation, and there's no differentiation. He made us different nation, and there's no differentiation. If you're black, if you're white, we are all God creation. If you're black, if you're white, we are all God creation. Deep in the deepest ocean, high on the highest mountain, in the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation.